Right here, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on episode three of the Facebook Hacker Show. Uh, today I'm joined by Ryan Tuckwood, who is the founder of Swish Sales Coaching. We get into that in a little bit more detail, but this is a really, really good episode for those of you who are either generating your own leads or outsourcing to get your own leads, but are struggling to convert more of them, you're gonna get some very valuable tips from this episode. So let's get straight into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the show. I have Ryan Tuckwood, who is the founder of Swish Sales Coaching. Uh, Swish stands for Selling with Integrity and Selling Honestly. Um, they're a sales consulting and, sorry, coaching business that's a multi-award winning sales training and coaching organization, I should say. I'm reading it literally off a script that I've written up this afternoon, so I don't know how the F I got that backwards. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, being the number one ethical sales training company in the world, they help business owners, entrepreneurs, sales professionals to increase revenue through ethical sales training delivered through their innovative Swish Training Academy, classroom style boot camps, and face-to-face high-intensity impact sessions. Mr. Tuckwood, how are you, man? Um, well, I'm fantastic, mate. Thank you very much for having me. That's the that's always the weird part out of the way, isn't it? Having to sit there and listen to, to all of that, but um, mate, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, thanks, Ben. I really appreciate your time. Uh, for those of you that uh, or those people who haven't heard of you or haven't heard of uh, Swish, could you give us kind of the background story as to, you know, your your kind of life story, where that came about and where you are now? Yeah, I'll try and make it as succinct as possible because it's been uh, published a, a lot. But um, my background is is engineering originally. So I was a mechanical maintenance engineer in the UK for eight years and um, got to the age of 27, decided that maybe there might be something more out there for me in life. Um, jumped on a plane, um, left everything behind and, and wound up on um, Sydney originally, but then um, then eventually got to the sunny Gold Coast. Um, fell into sales, kicking and screaming. Um, didn't want to be in sales. I think most people listening will know there is a stigma in the industry and um, around the people that, um, that, are, that are selling rightly or wrongly. Um, and for, for that reason, I didn't want to do the job. Um, and that kind of coupled with the fact I wasn't very good at the job, um, made me just want to quit and, and, and want to leave. Um, the job itself was to pick up the phone 300 times a day um, and ask people if they had 15 to $25,000 in their bank um, in 90 seconds. Um, so abuse, 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 rejection. Um, and you're taking a, a pacey little introvert English fella from a place called Leicester in the UK and you're putting him into that environment um, and it just demoralized me, mate. Um, mm. So the, the birth of Swish really came at that demise so that at the stage of me quitting um unwittingly and unbeknownst to me was it was a great pivotal moment in my life because it was the stage of which i went enough is enough i'm not good at this i'm 21st out of 21 sales people i've got no money I'm, i was sleeping on a bathroom floor at the time um and at that stage i did i did have my notice in um and my sales manager at the time who who was the co-founder of this company jack um he just set me a challenge he 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 sent me a challenge to, to learn as much as I could about sales and negotiation and body language, emotional intelligence and buying behaviors in general. And um, over the next five weeks, after doing 15 minutes a day, roughly, of, of training and just reading whatever I could, watching whatever videos I could, um, I had a big penny drop that just like engineering sales as a process and there is an order of which you can do things that can massively impact the decision of somebody else. Um, now that is a powerful and very dangerous skill to acquire. Um, um, but for me, what it did was give me a level of confidence in all aspects of my life that I didn't know I had. Um, and it also, like we'll talk about the finances. I know sometimes this is looked upon uh, badly, but um, I did $334,000 commission 18 months later. Um, and that was like, I never had that type of money before. And I was able to support my family back home. My, my dad's been pretty sick over the years. And I'm like, Oh my God. So all I've done is change the order that I say words and how I say them. Um, and I've made all this money um, and I can have impact on people. And, and th at that stage, I just realized I can't be the only one. There must be other introverts out there that are trying this, failing and hating. We're going to go away and create a business. And that's what Jack and I did. We, we created Swish in 2014 um, with a mission of changing the perception of the industry. We wanted to show that good people could actually be successful in sales. Um, fast forward to today nearly 7,000 clients later, um, uh, a Shark Tank adventure, as I'm mm. probably going to go into um, at some stage. 
um, here we are. I still absolutely love what I do every single day. I couldn't agree more uh, that you are absolutely changing the perception of sales. Uh, a lot of your teachings, a lot of your um, even content on LinkedIn. I know personally, I picked up a lot of, um, uh, I guess I would say broadly, a lot of tips that have enabled me and I've noticed of coming up in, in terms of conversation. And I really believe that a lot of, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you know, sales is about communicating more effectively. Really, it's, you know, spending a bit more time doing a little bit of research and asking what do you want and then, you know, a smaller portion of that time being able to uh, deliver that, hey, I have a solution to this problem, you know, and instead of, you know, doing the whole reverse cold calling back in the day, which is, hey, do you want to come and buy my stuff and my advertising space and everything else in between? But um, yeah. we're on that note. Um, really broad question, but uh, the majority of our listeners, uh, believe it or not, a lot of them are freelance marketers, Facebook marketers. Uh, majority of them are obviously small to medium-sized business owners. Uh, generally speaking, how can we close more deals? Well, there's a, there's a million-dollar question. Um, it? It, there, there's a lot of fundamental things that people do wrong. Um, I, I like what you said a moment ago, right? It, Communication is the word for it. The, the, when when the sharks came on board, um, I remember Andrew saying very clearly, "This isn't sales training. This is communication coaching." Um, and every single business owner can benefit from learning how to articulate the value of what they offer in a more effective manner that is more endearing to the consumer. Um, and that's all we're doing, right? It's helping you tell your truth better. So we've all got a truth. What order do you do you tell it in? Do you tell it? Do you share it? Um, and the same goes to, to um, goes with your product or your service offering, right? There's different features and benefits of what you have to offer. And there's an order of which you present it that make it sound more appealing. Um, so where a lot of people are going wrong um, initially is they're going in to make a sale. They have the wrong intent. So they get, a, they get a lead come through. They have an appointment booked in their calendar or they do a cold outreach, however it may be. They meet somebody at a networking event and their intent is to engineer the conversation towards making a sale or, or a transaction. If you're doing that, you're going to follow the path of least resistance to get there, which means you're not going to do the hard part, which is to truly build a relationship. Um, so people try to get there too quickly um, and they need to emotionally detach away from the outcome. So I, the easiest way to, to phrase that, um, I think I did put it out in a video once, is our job is not to make a sale. Our job is just purely to find out whether a sale should be made. Um, and if, if you look at it, let's say I gave you, um, say you made $300 commission, right, on a, uh, on a sale that you're about to make. And I gave you a list of leads and I'm like, okay, so I'm going to give you all of the money up front. And all you have to do is find out if they can benefit from your services. Not, not get them to say yes, but just find out if they can benefit. And you've got a check, a check sheet of 10 things. So you got to check, check them all off. This is all the intelligence you need to find. Would you ask different questions? Would you go deeper? Would you build more of a relationship with those people that are not opening up with you? You'd learn the skills to do that, right? Because all you got to do is find out if they can benefit. A byproduct of doing that is a deeper connection and they start to sell themselves anyway. Um, so that's, that's probably the biggest thing that I see as a, as a problem is that people go into it with the wrong intent. Totally agree. Wow. That's a really good way of framing that a really good way of framing that, you know, spending more time or even going in with the intention, not necessarily to engineer that conversation to make a sale, uh, but to see whether they can benefit from your services uh, or your products and everything else in between. That's really that, that is the sale, right? That's the, the sale is to find out if they can benefit and it's, it's hard, right? You may, we've all had bad weeks and months and, we were all started at a new job where you, you, your head's on the chopping block straight away and they're like, you've got to make sales. Um, and that basically means you're going to try to get to that point as quickly as possible. A natural mm. byproduct of that is a disconnect with your consumer and, and it's only going to make things even harder for yourself. That expectation in itself almost gears, uh, sets someone up for failure to a certain degree. And I guess that's, you know, coming yeah. from an older style of sales, right? <clears throat> um, my, one of my first, my first sales job was, um, cold calling anywhere from 300 uh, numbers a day, selling advertising space actually in the Gold Coast, either side of the um, the events, like some of the festivals and whatnot. Yeah. And so that was that was that was a cool experience, very very um, demoralizing to say the very least. But you know, the couple that did come through, you know, the amount of time I just think about um, that whole sales environment. 
old school uh, and the expectation to make sales and you are on the board for sales, which obviously mm. drives business. But even just a quick reframe for those people watching and listening, Ryan made a really good point of if you could just uh, set your objective for say that call, inbound call from Facebook or wherever it's coming from, and set that intention to see whether they could benefit from your business. Um, as as you mentioned, like that whole conversation is going to steer down a path of, well, yes, I could de- I could definitely benefit from your business, and here's why. So you know, where do we go from here? As opposed to why should I do business with you? Mm. Yeah, and, and and I guess that's the um, right, right at the top of that. You said um, that the, the pressure comes. The pressure comes from not necessarily the individual, but from team leaders, managers, sales managers, owners putting pressure on new sales staff to perform on day one. Um, and it's a weird industry because you don't get that pressure in any other role. Nobody's going to go, right, HR, you've got two weeks. Administration, you've got two weeks. You make a mistake in your emails, you're out. Like <laughs> at sales, it's like you've got to hit the ground running. So the, the changing the perception of the industry is also changing the perception of the way we lead sales staff um, and, to, and to give them time and to learn, know that you put four people into a role you could have four different personalities and they're going to learn at different stages. And we need to, we need to be better at reading how to get the most out of people so that we can get them to their, their end goal or their potential as quickly as possible, not by a set date because it doesn't work like that. Mm, Yeah, totally agree, man. That's really good points. Um, Next question I have for you is what would be your process for identifying uh, why a business isn't converting opportunities? Um. I'd reverse engineer, well, I reverse engineer everything because I'm an engineer, um, but I'd want to understand um, when they say that they're not converting opportunities, I want to understand exactly what does that mean to them. Um, so some people will tell you they're converting it 90% um, and they will only tell you they're converting 90% of their warm inbound inquiries or referrals. And I'm like, well, no, like overall, every single interaction you ever have, by the time you get there, it's like 10%. Mm-hmm. So I'm, um, I, I always try to get to the point of human interaction as quickly as possible. So um, if they say they're not converting opportunities, okay, where does the lead come from? Um, how much intel do they have about you by the time they get to you? And then when you pick up the phone or, or jump on a Zoom or go and grab a coffee, what are literally the first words out of your mouth? Because what normally happens is they'll go, oh, I just talk about, um, I talk about the family, I talk about my weather. And I'm like, no, 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 tell me, what do you say? Right. So, and I get them to role play it with me. Um, and usually they'll say things like, um, hi, am I speaking to Ryan? And I'll be like, okay, stop. That's it. We're done. You've just admitted they don't know you, which is just raise sales defenses in the first four seconds. So what you can do is go revel, Ryan, Swish sales coaching. How have you been? Mm. Literally just change that dialogue, dialogue into a pre, um, into a familiar tone, a past tense question. How have you been? will instantly change the way they receive that information and set that call up for success. So I, I'm looking for the point of human interaction as quickly as possible. Um, and then I'm going to delve deeper and through the, the language and um, question that they have. Uh, and just to further add testimonial to the line that Ryan just added right there. Uh, so my partner, Nicole, is a women's coach. She's been using that line ever since we did your challenge uh, oh yeah, ago, awesome. right, hundred percent. Hey, yeah. it's Nicole. April, How's yeah. it doing? <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> like to date, and you want to see, like, you want to hear. So, if I could get some like recordings, I'll send them to you one day. But you want to hear the difference in reception, right? The difference is yeah. just like polar difference, massive difference. Mm. And Nicole would definitely agree with me. So that's a really good point. Well, you get one shot at it, right? Don't you? even mm. even with an inbound lead. Um, if they're outwardly looking for a service like like yours, whatever it is, the chances are you're not the only person that they're, they're profiling to see mm. if they're going to use your services. So they might have shot an email or an inquiry out to three or four different companies, but then you're the only one that sounded really familiar in that first interaction. And it creates an emotive response that you can't fight. Um, yeah. So otherwise they're going to get um, the bog standard phone call. Hi, am I speaking to Revel? Hey Revel, um, you popped your information into one of our lead generation strategies like you're just too clinical. Um, and it's just about being a real human being in 2021, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. I think more human interaction and just being a little bit less, uh, or being a little bit more human is, uh, what I tell everyone to do with their ads and they're creative, you know, it has obviously, uh, you know, in the Facebook marketing world, which is what we do. It's, it's really about being social and a social platform demands 
you know, a form of human element, right? And so yeah, no yeah, surprises yeah. that if you're more human on Facebook and you're more human with your first uh, sales interactions or, or communications, then you're going to have better conversations. You're going to build rapport a lot faster and, and you will do better business. Definitely. hundred sure. percent. Mm. What would be your advice to, man, I've been wanting to ask this question for a while. Here we go. What would be your advice to marketers who to generate the highest quality leads for themselves and their clients? Mm. Um, firstly, I'm not a marketer. And I'm not a lead generator. Um, I'll, 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 I'll disclaim it with that. Um, I think that one of the biggest lessons I, I've, I've had over the years is that we are living in such a fortunate age that we can sell 24 7 365 i can be in front of people 24 7 365 and i can convey the same consistent message 24 7 365 so um if you're looking to generate leads um in my opinion what you need to do is add value to the people that you're trying to get uh, turn into a lead before you even try and turn it into a lead if that makes any sort of sense um we, we do this quite strategically. Um, so the, um, if I was to give you a really clear one in the B2B space, um, so we, we generate a lot of our leads through LinkedIn, um, but it's not, a, it's not a, a, a traditional LinkedIn outreach as you might have a, a bot. Um, yep. We use LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Uh, we search for all of the sales managers, heads of coaches, heads of teams um, across Australia. They get pulled into a, um, a database. Um, our administration team will then fire off anywhere up to 20 um, connection requests per day from our sales agents, 48 hours later, maximum 48 hours later, they're going to give you a call um, and, uh, and just put a voice to the name. We then start to um, add value to you. You're now a captive audience on a platform that I know I'm going to post onto every single day. So my aim now is to be in front of you as recent and frequent as possible whilst adding value, not trying to turn you into a, uh, from cold to hot instantaneously. Um, You'd be familiar with the Google zero moment of truth. Um, yeah. I don't even I don't even know what the number what's what's the number these days? Like twenty odd touch points or something? Oh, something like that, man. It was funny. I'm, I was mucking around on bloody Google Trends this morning as well. But sorry, yeah, continue. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, you probably know more than I do about it. But um, my understanding is that um, we need to be seen upwards of twenty times now um, for somebody to get to a level of trust. So if you're trying to generate quality leads. Um, I don't think the ads always need to advertise for a booking or a demonstration or a product offering. I think the ads, and we spoke about it just before, the ads need to be offering true value to the end mm. user. So showing people how good you are, not telling them how good you are, is marketing in 2021, in my opinion. Um, and, uh, and we endeavor to do it. Like every single day we put content out there. I have scheduled creative and, and filming time every single week. We built this studio for that. Um, so if I didn't believe in it, we wouldn't have spent all the money on on the on this. It's a beautiful now. studio, by the way. I'm quite um, I'm quite jealous of the LED lighting behind there as well. <laughs> I'm just happy somebody studio. else has got LEDs. Um, yeah, I know, right? We've got take, uh, enough people have to them. find these bloody LEDs, man. I tell you what, <laughs> Bunnings had them, so I went straight down to Bunnings and got a couple of lines <laughs> of it. But um, do you know what? And just speaking of content, and uh, again, wholeheartedly agree. I think uh, adding value up front even perhaps before asking for something, even a smaller asset like someone's email address is, is marketing in 2021. And even if that is, you know, some of the videos that you share on Swish Sales Coaching uh, LinkedIn, which is how you find them um, on LinkedIn for any of those interested in connecting. I find that a lot of your videos do exactly that. And I will confirm that a lot of the content that you do put out is, is very um, little snippets and clips that are solving a problem right then and there. And uh, I acknowledge that and I find it very interesting and very insightful that I've had all of these little interactions and now I have a, a good, a, a pretty good understanding about what Swish sales coaching has to offer and the problem that you're solving specifically, it's not just sales coaching. Um, it's mm. much, much deeper than that, much, much deeper than that. And that's only been Ryan through my interactions with you or even just sorry, consumption of content on LinkedIn and, you know, perhaps, uh, Instagram as well. So I definitely agree with that. That's, so, that's a good point. Robert. I, I might just add on that. It's a huge point is that that's strategic, right? And um, that our, our mission is to change the perception of sales. Yes. Um, but what is sales um, is, is, another, is a secondary question to, to that. And in, in my eyes, what I, what I realized was I could learn all these skills and 
you could give me a word track or a language pattern to overcome an objection or to build rapport or give me some techniques to follow up. But if my headspace wasn't right in the first place, it's all pointless. So what we realized was it, and I don't really like the word holistic because I think it's overused, but it is more of a holistic approach to building world-class communicators. So we, we break it down into five sections. So state of mind, you're like your headspace and your focus and your resilience and your why, um, winning first impressions, um, identifying how to communicate with all different personas, um, general closing skills and negotiation training, and then culture. So how do you harness and create a world-class culture? So when we're putting content out there, it's not lopsided towards any one of them. It's not always how to overcome an objection. There's a little bit of everything, which then gives you a subliminal feel. So this company is doing more than just sales training. So mm-hmm. it is. It, it has been thought through and, um, and it's all periodically released in accordance with that. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. All right. So to kind of go full circle on that question, um, highest quality leads is a holistic, maybe a complete approach to uh, the content that you are putting out there in an organic or a paid fashion, you know, paid Facebook marketing, Instagram or LinkedIn ads. Yeah, that's a really mm-hmm. good point. Have an identity, right? Know, know exactly mm-hmm. what you stand for. And just ask yourself every time I put a piece of content out there, is that communicating our core values is it communicating what we stand for and what we're trying to achieve if not scrap it i like that man that's cool oh well, well again confirmed i know i'm confirming a lot of what you're saying here because you know i'm a bit of a stalker when it comes to linkedin um <laughs> another question here someone asks for a, it's more of a scenario slash question but someone asks for a quote via facebook messenger or in mm-hmm. the comments section of one of your facebook ads how do we best respond to that firstly it- what, what I'm never a big fan of is people that dodge that, right? So somebody says to you, how much is it? Or can you give me a quote for X, Y, Z? And they go, all right, well, DM me, right? Drives me absolutely crazy. Um, it, Good, because that's to- exactly why I asked this question. I'm speaking with the right man. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so what I would normally look to do is give a huge range. So I'm going to answer it, but I'm going to be like, you, if you said to me, Ryan, how much is your sales training? Anywhere from 350 bucks to a million dollars plus. Like, so... That you've got an answer. Like I, I'm playing your game here, but the reality is if you're a bricklayer and I say, how much is it for you to build me a house? You're going to ask me some questions about the size of the house. Um, so there needs to be a, a logic delivered back to them as to why you need to ask them more questions. So um, if it was in a, in a chat function, um, I'd, be, I, I'd almost reply, first thing, I really appreciate you um, wanting to find out more about our, our programs and our services ranges anywhere from $350 to upwards of seven figures, depending on the service that you're, you're, desire, um, you're looking for. Um, for us to give you a fully tailored quote, um, feel free to shoot us an email at admin at I, uh, ISR, that's my old company name, um, since the rebrand, swiftsalescoaching.com, um, and somebody will reach out to you over the next 24 hours. Um, so I've not dodged it. I've given you an answer. I've given you a huge range, and then you know they're going to fit somewhere in that spectrum. Mm. I would say that that's probably one of the biggest pieces of valuable information uh, that I think a lot of small business owners, especially those, you know, generating their own leads or own inquiries, you know, to be frank, it's not hard to set up a a Facebook lead generation campaign. You watch a few YouTube videos and whatnot, but it's your process as to what happens and different variables of inquiries. Um, You might have a different Mm. terminology for it, but so many comments say for a, um, a bricklayer or say a concrete resurfacer, which is one of our clients, um, gets a lot of comments saying, what's the price per square meter? Um, or might get some messages because uh, they're a little bit different to an actual lead through a lead form on Facebook um, and gets Facebook messages asking very similar questions. Now, um, being able to have a one size all kind of fit uh, answer is something that we've never had before. We've never, we've never had for that client, which I think it's really good that you covered that, but I could just imagine there are definitely a lot of business owners out there that uh, will dodge the question. And you see it, you only have to go through Facebook and scroll a couple of times and, you know, see a local business owner and, yeah. um, and see, I oh, will DM you immediately. I don't know about you, but immediately I think about that and it's like, well, I, obviously more people are going to have that question. I might even have that question. Save me the time of DMing you, man. <laughs> Just put the what, damn, what are you, what are you hiding? It's a range, right? <laughs> yeah. What, what are you hiding? I mean, the, the other way yeah. to go about it. Um, and I, and I say this a lot with, with objections. Like if you keep getting the same objection, you keep getting the same query. That's now your fault. If it keeps happening, it's your fault, right? So you need mm-hmm. to learn to preempt it or build it into your presentation. So if it's in an ad, um, you might, 
right into that ad. Um, so you know our, our framing technique, ANOX, the four-step yep. process. Yep, yep, yep. So you, you might just drop in there naturally. Um, as, as a concreter for the last 11 years, we recognize that everybody's situation is different. So obviously, if you would like a, a quote, feel free to reach out. Typically, we will either give you a call or email it back directly to you within the space of two hours. Pop, pop the word hashtag quote into the chat if you would like us to send you a quote. Right? So you actually remove that from happening in the chat so you don't have to deal with it. Um, mm -hmm. And you actually deal with it on the front end. Because then you still got, you still got the same result. Um, and it just opened the doors and, and encouraged people to ask. Yeah, I think so. And I'm glad you touched on it. Um, I did have it down here, so we're going to cover that one off right now. Um, your methodology, ANOC, could you explain that for us, please? Um, this is not my methodology. Um, that's from, it's a Sandler training technique. Um, it's actually been around for very, a very, very long time. And um, for some reason, I didn't come across it till a few years ago. Um, and I've just adapted it. Um, so the, the letters are the same. They, they use it more towards the back end of an interaction as a closing um, tool, but um, I've actually brought it forward at the start of the interaction to frame the whole um, the whole consult. Mm. So what it's designed to do is really remove confusion. Um, one thing that we we do know is that people don't buy in a state of confusion. So if there's any sort of um, lack of understanding in any area around whatever you're presenting to them. I'm going to default to a, let me think about it, send me some more information. That basically says, I just don't know enough yet to make a decision. So if you get that a lot, this technique is going to come in really handy for you. Um, so the, the first thing we, we do when we get a lead come through, and your guys, if you're generating leads for people, they, literally this can become your script uh, when they pick up the phone. Um, and it might be, um, Ryan, I firstly want to say thank you very much for taking time out of your day to pop your de details in and inquire about X, Y, Z, whatever your service is. Um, that's an acknowledgement or an appreciation of their time, right? So that's the A, acknowledge or appreciate. Then we're going to go into what we call a value builder, um, which starts with naturally, the N. So you say naturally after X amount of years in the industry. So you might say if you've been 11, 12 years, over a decade in the industry. Um, if you've been doing it for one week, you might say naturally after quite some time in this industry or naturally after working with the powerhouse business that is for the last three or four years, um, I've certainly recognized that everybody's situation is different. What you're now saying is we're not going to cookie cut to this. I'm going to tailor whatever um, this conversation is tailored to you. And I'm really, uh, really engaged in listening. The O is obviously, um, obviously for me to understand whether I can assist you or not, I'm going to need to ask you a few simple questions. So now you're opening the door to ask some questions, which you were going to ask anyway, but you're doing it from more of a submissive perspective, which um, lower sales defenses. And then the T is typically. Typically, this will go one of two ways. If at the end of asking you those questions, I don't believe I can assist you, is it okay that we just wish each other all the best? Yeah, okay. Alternatively, if I do believe that we have a product or service that I can assist you with, is it equally okay that I explain to you what the next steps might be? Yes. You've now framed that whole conversation um, to, to set yourself up for a successful interaction. Um, mm. It can sound quite long-winded when you break it down, but it can also be as simple as this. Revel, mate, really appreciate you taking time out of your day to give us a quick call today. Been doing this a long time, almost 14 years. Um, I know everyone's situation is different. Obviously, I'm going to fire off a couple of quick questions at you. If we can help you, great. If we can't, no big deal. Sound good? That's Sounds good. Still a, it's still a frame, right? Mm. Yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? Like um, that in itself, I think, you know, <clears throat> If I was to uh, kind of look at some of the the breakdowns, a lot of our a lot of the numbers that we track, right, especially for local businesses and those generating leads and inquiries, just you know through the back end of a, a Google spreadsheet or perhaps the client's CRM, right. And so we have this funnel, right, similar to how, and I want to talk about that in a second, like um, the numbers that you guys track for sales, right, because <clears throat> I think it's really really good, very very clever. But the back end of you know some of the numbers that we would track from say you know we've shown X amount of people. Uh, this ad on Facebook for say, again, this concrete resurfacing company. And then from that, we've had, you know, X amount of people click on the ad from X amount of those clicks. We'll have X amount of people drop um, their personal details to be contacted for a quote of those people who drop their uh, details from the quote. We then have connections, people who have actually picked up the phone and then what happens after that. Uh, and then we have converted sales among other things. Now I know you have uh, an extended process that I think in, personally is a hell of a lot more clever on the back end of once that 
lead comes in inbound or outbound. Can we talk a bit more about those numbers and, and your metrics there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess we're, we're an extension of you guys, really, right? You're, you're our big sister marketing. Um, so you, you generate the leads. You, you, you track all of the metrics up until the point of human interaction, which is what we spoke about earlier. All I care about is once you get them on the phone, what happens there um, or, or in an interaction? I mean, we, we do go into all of the value add around it, but um, at that point, I can really train you. Um, so yeah, I'm, 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 uh, I'm tracking on a daily basis the amount of dials uh, my team make. And I know not everybody's doing this over the phone, but just, just for the purpose of this exercise. Um, so how many dials are they making in a day? How many connections are they making in a day? So dials is one thing, but if you... If you make a hundred dials and you connect to nobody, I can't expect you to make a sale. Um, but if you're dialing 10 times and you're connecting to nobody, it's pretty easy to see if somebody's not working hard enough. Um, so dials connects. And then I want to understand um, their phone time. So how much time are they actually spending on a call, uh, on calls throughout the course of the day? So we have clear KPIs set against each one of them. So um, you've got, they got um, dial targets and phone time targets. So obviously, we can't control the connects. You can never control who's going to pick up the phone. Um, then I want to understand how many times they get into their presentation. So how, how, how many times do they get out of their introduction? They go through their frame, what the A not frame, and then get into an actual presentation. Because sometimes you call people up and they'll have forgot about the appointment. They tell you they're too busy. Can you call me back later? And what I can learn from that is if, if you're connecting with 10 people a day, and seven of them, you're not even getting into your presentation, I need to train you on your intro. We need to get that sharper because just because somebody tells you they don't have time right now does not mean they don't have time right now. If they pick up Agreed. the phone, they've got time right now. That was one of the best lessons I ever got taught. So we use um, um, a, a technique um, for, I can, I'll just give, give a quick tip. Um, if you get that, very, uh, get that quite often where people on the front end are saying, oh, listen, I don't have time right now. I'm a bit under the pump. What we look to do is what we call art, A-R-T. Um, so we acknowledge it. Listen, I appreciate that you're under the pump at the moment. And I'm responding to it. A lot of people that I speak to every single day are of a similar sort of mold. But the reason for the call today anyway was just to see, and I transition out of it. I carry on anyway. Now, for some people, they'll be like, oh, that makes me feel really weird. Um, <laughs> Can it's I amazing. really quickly? There's sales <laughs> training back in the day, which wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. You know, going back seven or eight years, <clears throat> this is when I was in PT. So I'd, I'd call them up, pick up the phone. They'd be like, oh, sorry, I don't have time. I was like, do you know what we're taught to do? Was say, we, you picked up the phone. Surely you got time. And it was just like, like fucking crickets. So yeah. Yeah, thanks for new trainings. Fantastic. But it, but it is, I mean, that's the reality is that, right? I'm a sarcastic mm. English person. So that's what I want to say. Um, yeah. I want to say, well, come on, you picked up the phone. So the rule of thumb is if they pick up the phone, they do have time. <laughs> you have to elegantly earn the right to get another 30 seconds. That's the word, is um, it? Elegance. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. And it, and, and it can be done. And if you do that to every single person that says that to you, you won't break rapport with them. Uh, not as, you think you will, but you won't if it's done correctly. Um, and I'm... Um, one thing that still surprises me to this day, the amount of people that tell me they don't have time and then half an hour later, they're giving you credit card details over the phone. Um, like they found half an hour and their credit card when they were, when they seen enough value. So, um, so yeah, we want to assess how many presentations they're getting into. Um, then I want to understand how many times they're asking for the business. Um, and then obviously once I understand how many times they're asking for the business, how many sales did they make? Um, so they're, they're, they're the metrics that we follow within an interaction um, because what I can learn is, is there, a, is there a bottleneck? Is there a point at which it kind of falls off a cliff every single time where they mm. just, they just never ask him for the business. They never get out in their presentation, which means they're getting shot. They're getting shot down somewhere in their presentation. We need to do some role playing, some training around it. Yeah. That's that, uh, re that's that engineering background coming in there, dialing and everything. That's fantastic. Um, can that's I ask it. real quick, what's some of, uh, what CRM or what software are you using, uh, to track those metrics or have them perhaps automatically populate in certain areas yeah so we um so we use um, infusionsoft that's yep. our that's our that's our crm system so we've got um a lot of um what are they called um automated um sequences that, that roll out depending on where people are within our within our funnel you, you give us the objection you can't afford it or call me after the new year or the financial year you get dragged into a certain section don't ask me how it works because i didn't build it um but um, it, it will then send you a sequence of emails based around that objection. Um, so it's very, 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 very specific. 
Um, so yeah, Infusionsoft is what we're using and it's um, pretty, it's, we, we've only been using it about a year, but it's very, very good. Yeah. What about um, tracking the phone time? Uh, phone times, we do that through, um, we use a company called 3CX, gotcha. um, which is, so, so it's, it's basically a VoIP dialer um and it just at the end of the day it just set, schedules off a report um of everybody's phone times and dials and, and all of that nice i do love a bit of automation especially where a human isn't uh, required for the most part yeah, yeah. on top of that though i mean this is this is probably what's the reverse of automation Matt manual um the <laughs> is that at the end of every day i get my every single staff member to send me an email um, covering their productivity and positive. So what did they do? And for the sales guys, that does cover dials, connects, and phone time, just those three things. So they have to pull their own data because I want them to be aware of that. I don't mm. want it just being coming through. I want them to walk out here going, I made 64 phone calls today. I connected to 11 um, and I had two and a half hours phone time and I put X amount of money on the board. Um, I, want, I want that to be something that's ingrained. Um, so they send me positives and my productivity and they send me any questions or concerns or challenges that they face today. And then their wow factor. So how did they go above and beyond for a client today? Um, and they might not always wow a customer, but I want it to be front of mind that our purpose every day is to, is to wow somebody. Mm. Um, so I get any, that um, manual feedback daily. Yeah, that's fantastic, by the way, uh, especially that final point of anyone with the, listening or watching with the sales team or managing a sales team, uh, bringing it front of mind that these numbers are important. Seems like a really simple tip as opposed to weekly or daily, however anyone else does it, uh, you know, just bringing them in and them being kind of a bit blasé about these metrics, right? Is having it in front of them every single day and making it that, yes, these things are important, definitely. Yeah, and and it and it's it's top of funnel metrics as well, right? And so, I, I I don't want them to focus on the revenue because if you focus on the revenue, you're focusing on the sale. You focus on the sale, you're going to take the path of least resistance, and you're going to cut corners. So, all I want them to do is focus on your outreach, right? You got to make anywhere from thirty to sixty dollars a day. If you do that, I know how many you'll connect with. You follow then the structure, the presentation, the demonstration, the the the, the way you build rapport and gather in intelligence. You share the story, you sell the features and benefits to their pain, not to the part that you want to, to, to sell because you like it. Um, and the natural byproduct of that is a conversion rate that we're very comfortable with. And all you then have to do is either add more staff members into that system um, mm. instead of telling everybody, come on in, you have to make X amount of money today. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Now, a little segment that I, I love to go into is almost like a, I call it a hot seat, but it's really just a couple of scenarios and it's like, what would Ryan do, right? So yeah. first scenario, first of all, are you cool to do that? Yeah, uh, no. Okay, well, <laughs> all right, well, we'll wrap it up, folks. That's all we got time for today. I'll see you next week. <laughs> nah, fire um, away, mate. I like Thank you, mate. Hot. Thank you. Um, so scenario number one is you have a super happy client, really happy client. Uh, what's an ethical way to promote another service or upsell something product service to them? Um, so the, the, firstly, the ethical way is to sell it. Unless that's, so rather than finding an ethical way, the, it is ethical and it's almost non-ethical to not recommend a product or service that you know is going to help them. So what I like about upselling and cross-selling existing customers is after a period of working with them, you know if something else is going to work for them as well. So you actually have more conviction in it um, as well. So um, the, the conversation for me is pretty simple. Um, Revel, mate, I just wanted to, to say thank you very much for being part of our, our academy for the last four or five months. Um, I love people that go all in. You can see you're getting results. Um, one thing that I don't think was ever discussed with you is our accelerator program. It's an elite program that we run. Now, um, you may have heard of it. You may want to stay focused on what you're doing right now. Um, but I believe I'd be doing you a disservice as a coach if I didn't at least bring that to your attention and take two or three minutes to explain how that works. So would you mind if I do that for you quickly? Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah, nice. And then I'm just going to introduce it. Beautiful. Especially in the marketing world or perhaps even different agencies or even freelancers, I should say, who um, have a multifaceted, um, you know, kind of upskilled in perhaps Google ads, YouTube ads, Facebook ads, blah, blah, blah. Um, they'll, they'll kind of be approached or they have inbound leads that will ha be about Facebook ads, but they have, you know, once they've delivered results on say the Facebook marketing, everything, they have these other skill sets and these other offerings to be able to further amplify what they're doing on a particular platform. So I think that's, that's yeah. really good advice. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you owe it to them, right? If you're, 
if you're an advisor and you're truly trying to get great results for your clients and you knew you had something in your pocket that, that you know is going to benefit them, why wouldn't you bring it to the table? Right. right. It's, um, you, can't, you can't sell a secret and, and that's your job. Mm. Yeah. Do you have just a side note here? Do you have a, perhaps different processes? I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole of personality types because there's plenty of stuff yeah. out there already. Um, that's a rabbit. Do you have a, a different approach to say a, a conversation with a different personality type or perhaps a different, um, you know, disc profile for use of a better explanation. Mm, um, interesting timing. Cause I'm going for my full, full disc and EQ accreditations right now. So um, I'm in rabbit holes galore and um, yeah, overanalyzing everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but um, in short, yes, yes. The, the conversation does adapt and the, the contents of value that we share with them, the emails and um, the videos, they do change. Um, the structure of an email, whether it be lengthy paragraphs as opposed to bullet points, yeah, they, it does it does change. Uh, because mm -hmm. what we have to recognize is that not everybody buys in a way that we like to sell. Um, so I'm, as, quite, as you said, I'm an engineer, right? So I'm very methodical, process-driven. But many people are not. Um, and although these structures in place here, you say, Oh, it's, you've got it nice and clean. It all runs smoothly. Some of my team hate it because I'm too anal with it all. But um, mm. that's, that, that's, that's just the way that I work. So yeah, we, we definitely do change and we, we adapt our language. That doesn't mean you have to become someone you're not. It just means that you need to care enough about your customers to learn their sales language, which disc mm. if you use disc, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, the reason I bring that up is, you know, in, in not even Facebook marketing, but in the marketing world, video right, which you would be familiar with is just a very potent content type, very potent. Mm. Um, and so let's say two years ago, it was all video, 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 video. You had these wonderful video productions going around. They convert really well. And I always found that um, still to this day, we'd have a video for a client, say a consultant or a webinar fund or whatever it is. We'll have a video that goes out on Facebook, which is going out to people who have never heard of that business before. But we're still testing, um, you know, static images that we mentioned before. Uh, we we're talking about before I started recording it, unfortunately. But, you know, I found organic content for us has always been static image, maybe myself, maybe myself and Nicole. And the educational piece doesn't come in a video because it's obviously an image. It comes in the caption, right? And I acknowledge that. And I find that fascinating that, you know, if you're so big on video and like, yes, we've got to have a video out that is explaining this coaching course or this particular product or service, but you aren't also acknowledging these other personality types, which I think is what we're sort of edging on here with a static image and say some long form copy, people who like to read or a mm. bit more perhaps visual. Um, I find that as a, a bit of a, a missed opportunity for, for most business owners sort of advertising uh, on Facebook anyway. What do you think about I that? Th I think, yeah, I think, I think what happens uh, and I'm generalizing here, but, I think we try different things. We go, we get an opinion from somebody else in the company and they go, well, I don't like that. And you go, well, I do. And they go, all right, we'll try it your way. You put that out and then you get some abuse on that ad. So you go, well, that didn't work. Um, but you're, you're, so you're always going to alienate 75% of the market. Cause if there's four different personas, only one ad is going to hit one more, one percent, one um, portion of the market. So, and something I had to I had to learn is that you you're never going to keep everybody happy, even in a training session. You're never going to get a hundred percent love in a room. But what I can learn to do in that one training session is talk to all four different personality types over the course of four eight four to eight hours or whatever it may be. So your ads, in my opinion, have to do exactly the same, and and that's how we strategize them. Like I kind of touched on earlier, that although we have and it is a rabbit hole, we've got the the five different. Um, fundamentals of, of swish um that we teach which then branches out into hundreds of video video pieces of content every time we go into one we're then going who which audience is that talking to okay and, and does the language then suit the video content as well do the colors suit um what's going out okay well we did one yesterday that really targeted the dominant people all right today we're going to do the influencers tomorrow we're going to do the s's um and it and it it, it does take time it's it's, it's hard, um, mm. which is why most people, which is what we spoke about earlier, they put it into the too hard basket. But the way I look at marketing, not just from a lead gen perspective, it, it, it validates what people are 
Um, if you have a conversation with somebody, they go away, they're going to search for you. They're going to Google you. And all of this content just validates everything that you may have said on the phone um, or in the mm-hmm. interaction. Um, and, and it just gives them more reason to use your services afterwards. So you're better to have something than nothing uh, mm-hmm. because your competition probably does. Agreed. I know you mentioned it's hard and some people might put it in the too hard basket, but I bet as a past engineer, you would lap up those numbers and you would love the uh-huh. testing methodology that comes with it, especially when yeah. that stuff starts to work. I actually, and, and you might feel the same, right? Um, for me personally, right? Building ads and all that kind of stuff is great, but you know, most people can do it with a bit of training and a bit of time, right? And a bit of patience, of course. Uh, the stuff that really gets me, I, I sort of um, compare to say a home builder and you go past a house that he's built. He's like, Hey son, I built that car. For me, it's always been about, Hey, I built that funnel. You know what I mean? That yeah, takes yeah. someone who knows nothing about your brand to now paying you even a dollar to me is a massive, massive win. Hopefully it's a, you know, a positive return on investment, but still yeah. that whole mechanism is, is, and being able to perhaps do something a little bit different. Um, and a little bit innovative, not so much, you know, within the mold is, is a massive job satisfaction key point uh, for me. So do you find that as well? That, yeah, that, I mean, well, I had somebody say to me many, many years ago when I was actually, when I was really hating sales um, and they said, you don't need to love sales. And um, so don't, you don't need to love what you do. You just need to learn to love how you do it. If you learn to love how you do it, a natural byproduct of that will be that you will become good at it. And when you're good at something, you can then fall in love with it. Um, and that's, that was literally my journey. I hated it, but I fell in love with the process. Um, I wanted mm. to be better at communication. I wanted to have more confidence around people. I wanted to be able to speak on stage. Um, and now I love it. Like that's, that's, that's not my comfort zone now is on stage in front of a thousand people, which you talk to my parents back in the UK. They're like, who are you? Like that's that's not the kid that we brought up, and and it's only because I've got a process and a system that I that I now adhere to, so I feel comfortable in that world. So, um, yeah, I can imagine when you've spent so much time building funnel after funnel, and then you start to see results. It's, it's hugely rewarding as well. Yeah, hundred percent. I totally agree. Uh, last scenario I have for you here: you've made a presentation over the phone. They've requested an email. What happens next, and what is the follow up process? Ooh, ooh, this is where people lose people. Um, okay. So for the the best way to set the next appointment is to finish this first appointment strong. The language that I use at the end of every first interaction um, is pretty simple. Um, and people are going to need to listen to this a couple of times. But um, Revel, firstly, mate, appreciate you taking half an hour out of your day to, to allow me to introduce ourselves and, and most importantly, find out a little bit more about you. Um, now I can send over that email as requested. That's easy for me to do. But one thing I do know is the second we put this phone down, 101 questions are going to spring to mind. So out of res- respect for your time, I'll pop you back into the diary for the next 24, 48 hours, shoot you over the email right now. And then I can answer any questions that you've got. Does that sound sensible? Right? Yes. Always get a yes to that. And now I'm going to go, okay, so just opening up my diary then and just open up yours for me as well. Um, are you better on Thursday or Friday? Friday. AM or PM? PM. Okay, I've got a 2 or 4.15. 4.15. Brilliant. Um, well, I'll pop that in the calendar right now. I'll shoot you over an invite. Um, I'll speak to you at 4.15 on Friday. I will send over that email this evening, and I'll be able to answer any questions um, with you then. And it's, so it's just the same thing every single time. Um, and it's just it's just controlling it. What, what I see at the back end a lot of is, well, that's, that's pretty much it. I've shown everything to you. You got any questions? And then they go, no, nah, well, just yeah. Can you email me all that over? And you're like, yeah, I've kind of covered everything, but yeah, I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will do anyway. Yeah. Um, so I'll email it over. And then they go, when do you want me to call you back? And it's just like total <laughs> handover of control. So yeah. we call it funnel questions to book that second appointment. Um, and then the, that evening after 6 p.m., so after perceived business hours, send them a text message personalized um, asking for nothing just thanking them for their time and how, how much you enjoyed the conversation. Personalize it. Um, the next morning, I will send them a content of value. So a, a piece of information that is going to add value to a problem they told me they were facing already in their business. Um, so that then keeps them warm in between because we know time kills deals. Mm, beautiful. 10 out of 10, mate. That is um, That is phenomenal value for everyone. So I think yeah. that's hugely powerful that 
you know, you have a second opportunity, you have a second uh, impression or a third impression, wherever they are in, in this kind of um, behavior to be able to set that second appointment 24, 48 hours. And I love the fact that uh, you've kind of, you've given them two options and they've said, you know, they've kind of come down to where you need them to be anyway, uh, to warrant giving them a call to answer more questions and have the second opportunity. And, um, and just out of interest, I'm hoping that you've, you've, um, <laughs> you've tracked this, but how many people read the email upon getting a second call? Uh, nah, very, very little. Um, I, <laughs> I, I don't have, I don't have our, our data, but I would say it would be under 10%. Um, yeah, yeah. Very, very little. And it definitely increased once we started sending the text message. Um, yeah. But the, the main point is there when you then, I mean, it's a whole different training session, but you could, the, when you go into the second call, it, that's, that's um, you need to own that at the start that they won't have looked at the email. Do not give them an opportunity to say, sorry, I haven't had a chance to have a look. Call me back Monday. Um, yeah. It, we're going back into it. Rebel, mate, give me a quick call as a range back on Wednesday. Now, I doubt for I don't doubt for a second that you didn't have a chance to have a look at that email. But regardless of that, what I wanted to touch on today was X, Y, Z. Just just mm. plow straight through. Um, just I know we're right at time, but um, just as a caveat to booking the appointment, let's say that the first thing I would always do is they ask for an email um, or prior to them even being in a position to ask that after my presentation, um, I like to ask... Um, is there anything that you haven't seen today that you need to see to help you make a decision? Yeah. Is there anything that you haven't seen today that you need to see to make a decision? And if they go, well, no. Okay, brilliant. Um, and from everything that we've discussed, do you believe that what we have to offer here is going to benefit you um, in the short term and the long term? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Well, the process from here is really simple. And I'll just go into a, a quote. If they're telling me they've seen absolutely everything, they're happy with everything, why wouldn't I? That doesn't make sense. I, I'm not going to push them away. Mm. So I, yeah. I put myself in a position of comfort by asking those questions. You can even say um, on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you with everything you've seen today? Seven. Okay, brilliant. Well, I've nearly done my job correctly. What else do you need to see for you to be in a position to make a decision? What's going to take you from a seven to a 10? Oh, well, I need to see this. So you need to see, need to see an email. Okay. Um, the email will just regurgitate a little bit of what we've spoken about so far. I can shoot that over to you. So we always agree. We never say we're not going to do it. But um, apart from the email, there must be something more. That's not a three out of 10 email. What else do yeah. you need to see to get you to a 10? Um, and I want, to, I want to be brave and dig a little bit deeper. Have the tough yeah. conversations. Totally. Yeah, it's the same as anything. You cover the tough conversations and you can, you know, it's all downhill figuratively from there, right? So those are really good points, man. I really appreciate it. And look, I really appreciate your time. Um, uh, thank you for giving me the hour. I'm sure our viewers, listeners, and everyone else in between got a lot of value out of this. Um, you can find Ryan and Swish Sales Coaching. You can Google Swish Sales Coaching and they'll be the top result. I did my due diligence there. Swish Sales Coaching okay. on LinkedIn, Ryan Tuckwood on LinkedIn. Anything else or anywhere other places that we can find you, Ryan? Um, I, all, all of the socials, yeah, Facebook, Instagram. Um, Instagram is just baby spam, um, as you know. But um, yeah. there, there's, there are some training videos on there as well if they want to connect me on there. Yeah, no, it's a good mix. It's a good mix. I really enjoy it, man. But hey, look, thank you very much for your time. Uh, anyone listening to this, uh, the, these guys have my vote, the whole organization in terms of sales coaching uh, that is innovative and is new age and where I believe uh, most businesses need to be heading in. So you definitely have my vote, Ryan. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it, mate. Thanks for the opportunity.